Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify. Hi everyone. Welcome to the e-commerce growth show. I hope you're all really well. So we are into the fourth series now of the show. Um, as you know, from the third series, we had uh, a number of, um, uh, kind of examples really of how Segmentify has been deployed amongst our customer base to really sort of push forward the boundaries, if you like, of a personalization strategy. And I hope that was, was useful for you. Um, now we're into the fourth series. It's more about going back to real thought leadership from various different angles um, to, to our community to help them in terms of all their strategies moving forward, um, run agencies and consultancies and so on. And, um, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to a guy called Andrew Stevens. Um, now, Andrew, he is the co-founder of uh, a business called Commercial Optimization, and uh, he's a guy with over 20 years experience now in high tech uh, commercial teams, taking Silicon Valley companies into Europe. So some pretty heavyweight experience that he's had. And, um, you know, companies like Rich Relevance, Mobify, I, I believe you mentioned a couple. So during that journey, he got introduced to this um, framework, if you like, called um, Traction and this concept of EOS, which I've, I've never heard of and uh, hence, hence having Andrew on today. And um, it's a very interesting um, system, if you like, for supporting businesses. Uh, I won't go into too much details. I don't know much about it, but um, I'm really looking forward to um, talking to him more about it. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Yeah, it's great, Phil. Thanks very much for uh, inviting me on to your uh, to webinars. Uh, not at all, not at all. I'm really excited to hear more about this. So, so I've only got a bit of a joke to start with. What what the heck is EOS? <laughs> to say that because it's 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 the phrase that people ask all the time, and EOS can be misinterpreted as the the Canon camera lens. If you're aware of the uh, the EOS things, but uh, there's a book, funny titled uh -huh. uh, "What the Heck Is EOS?" <laughs> yeah. If you want to know the basics. I would recommend starting with that book, if not yeah. the little one behind me, which we can talk about as well. Oh, completely. Yeah, I do. I love these kind of books. I mean, I don't know whether you're familiar with the, the, the Dummies Guide range. But yeah, absolutely. I'm such a massive advocate of those books. I've learned so much about you know, really intense topics, um, but broken down so well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing much more about, um, uh, about what you guys are doing. So, I mean, as, 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 as a kind of a theme, if you like, for um, this chat, Obviously, it's going to be about EOS and traction, um, as we talked about earlier, um, but obviously specifically geared towards the our community, you know, our re the retail experts that are watching right now. So do you want to sort of just dive into that a little bit and tell the guys what it's all about in perspective um, for them? Yeah, sure, sure. So this, this system, EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System, is designed really to help founders, owners of businesses get better traction and forgive me because there is the book called traction um, that, that it's underpinned by but right. really where where it stems from and and how how I found my journey on, on on this subject is that all businesses face or entrepreneurial businesses and fast-moving businesses face 136 simultaneous challenges that are thrown at them constantly, um, whether that's customer uh, issues, whether it's transactional technology issues, it's a barrage of, of fundamental issues that are thrown at businesses every day. And, and to the degree that you can move these issues out of the way is where the problems start in business. A lot of businesses can't understand what to do with these issues or where to put these issues. And what generally starts to happen is as the businesses grow or they start to change or transform, they will just get slower and slower because you can't, you can't move these issues out of the way, which means you're either kicking the issues down the road and they become worse mm. or people in a business can't begin to prioritize what they're doing. So EOS is, is a fundamental operating system that helps you kind of compartmentalize these 136 issues. So when they come at you as a business, you want to know where they sit. And, and we call them the six key components or the EOS model. Mm. All businesses run on. 
Um, and credit to Gino Wickman, who created Traction. He's a lifelong entrepreneur that founded that his passion in life was to help entrepreneurial businesses and fast businesses. Mm -hmm. Came up with this system, which I, I used um, in business for a number of years, that these six key components, and just very briefly, the, the six key components are your vision. So mm -hmm. where you're going and how you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. People component. So the people that work in your business, mm. your data component. So what is the business telling you about the data to help you become better predictors, both short term and long term? Mm. And a really, really important one. Your fourth component is your issues component. Mm. A lot of businesses have this locked down, open and honest way of not working. And the reality is you've got to get your issues out of your head, both at a personal level, department level and business level. Mm. The business can understand how to move them out of the way. So we have a specific mm. component about issues. Mm. The fifth component is your process. Good old fashioned process. Mm. You've got to have the right processes in place to help you move your business forward faster, quicker and easier. And then the last component, which is the sixth component, is what we call the traction component. You can spend ages coming up with this grand vision, have all the data, the best people in the business, but if you have no way of pulling it down to the ground, forgive the, forgive the pun, you know, rubber hits the road. Mm. Gene uses the phrase of vision without traction is hallucination. So this model is designed these six key components to help you really structure your business. Mm. That's really interesting. Um, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, how how because obviously i've been what i've worked in technology companies for many years and i you, you know i had a revelation via the salesforce mantra of v2 mom i don't know whether you ever come across that um it's, it's not as deep actually as the as the pillars that you're talking about but it certainly helped me when i was running teams to really get to the bottom of what it was we were trying to do and actually achieve it and benchmark it and so on in your experience um because i'm not a retailer but obviously experts in the retail sector are watching right now how established is this kind of thing in your opinion already within the retail sector i think i think largely it's not very well established in the basis of traditional retail is run in old-fashioned values um and that the companies that have succeeded really well are the ones that have changed the way they work um, or they pivoted forgive the pun that again, they pivoted quickly to do something different. So yeah. they brought in, you know, they brought in digital hubs and digital communities to help really change the psychology of their businesses. But if, if I'm brutally honest, I think this is one of the challenges that retailers face. Yeah. They don't have this common language or, or system mm. to help redesign their businesses, which is really, really required. They're kind of working in old, fashion ways and values mm. and you can see this and uh, quite commonly where a retailer will lean on a board and you think what well, why do you need a board everybody needs to have experience but in essence a board is a really old fa old fashioned way of working you the, mm. the business should be using the people at the leadership level mm. as the smartest people in the business mm. falling back to an external board that's going to advise you mm. then there's something that that to mm says that you're going too slow. The smartest yeah. people are your leadership team and the people you've got in the business. Therefore, I would question the operating model or the business model that they're using. Mm. No, that makes, that makes sense. And you know, um, just talking about the, this sector, you know David Williams, right? I do, yes. David is, um, he's been around, I think I, I first met David in a pub. Yeah. It was one of the World Cups. And um, it was probably one of the World Cups that we would, we exited on the penalties, like normal. Mexico '86. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. It was. Yeah, no, it was uh, 2000, 2006. So it was, it was either a World Cup, yeah. or a Euro. I can't can't remember now. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, David is. Um, he's uh, he's been a great customer of mine in, in my career, and um, yeah, he uh, doesn't live too far away. No, but that's kind of cool. I mean, he's a guy who's clearly a, a strong influencer and leader in our, in the e-commerce space. Um, and obviously he did a he did a podcast actually on on his his thoughts and insights on the future of retail so that's kind of interesting i mean the the, the thing i'm quite interested to know more about is 
how do you go about working with retailers, you know, to uh, action what you do and, and achieve the success that your business clearly tries to drive for, for retailers or, or obviously businesses in general? Yeah, and, and, and I was chatting with David not so, during the lockdown period and David, he's not, uh, he's not shy in coming forward. He was saying that you no. know, the number of retailers that he's had conversations with or engagements with, they're, yeah. they're in chaos. Uh, from an organizational perspective, they haven't got all of they haven't got everybody rowing in the same direction. They haven't got that strategic, clear, same everybody's on the same page. So I think retail really needs to, you know, I'm gonna say cheesy, get a grip. There's another book behind me called Get a Grip. Um, that was not intended. I just suddenly realized that. So it retailers are like may, most businesses. Yeah. The, you need to get the foundations right. And that, that's often a real challenge in a business that's been around for a while. It's been doing the same, this, it's been working the same way. And all of a sudden, it will stop working. Mm. We use the phrase of hitting the ceiling. So businesses will hit these ceilings. Um, they, will, they will plateau on revenue. They could even start going or dipping on revenue or profitability. And, and ultimately, they just they feel stuck. Sometimes they will throw more people at it, they'll throw more money at it, but fundamentally the foundations of that business need to be reset. Mm. You, you need to, you need to re, re-level the playing field in terms of the, the management team. Um, one of the biggest challenges is when you're building that vision of where you go, companies often make the mistake of coming up with these strategic workshops about where do we go, how are we going to get there, what they fundamentally either don't know or, or, or have forgotten is the foundations weren't solid. Mm. So they start building these visions and these ideas when actually accountability back in the business is not right. Mm. And they think they've got the plan. They think they've had a great workshop and they set themselves off. And very quickly they realize that, or they think that that vision is not right. Mm. Chances are the vision could be entirely right. But nobody in the business is holding themselves accountable mm-hmm. to take the take the team and the business towards that vision. Right. Things right. start to go wrong, accountabilities go like that. Politics, egos mm-hmm. um, tend to go wrong. So back always whichever sector and retail, you know, have to go back to the basics. Is this the best leadership team to start with? Mm-hmm. Often I find that when I'm in a workshop there'd be somebody in that room that doesn't want to be on a leadership team. Yeah. They've just kind of grog- gone organically with it all. They've been promoted. And But how do you find that out though? How, how do you get down to that nitty gritty and, and you know, how, how does, how, how do, can you, how can one do that or how do you assist that? So we, we, we use the phrase open and honest. Right. We have to go back to a foundation and the EOS process in its design, the proven process specifically goes back to what we call a focus day. Right. And the focus day is where you realign slash redesign their leadership team from their perspective. So as, as an EOS implementer, my job is not to tell them the answers. No. My job is to facilitate the answers out of them as a, as a team. Mm. We go back to what does the business fundamentally need in its structure forget egos forget titles now this is a real life scenario of there could be people in the room that are no longer needed on that leadership team yeah it doesn't mean to say they're the wrong people it's just that this leadership team needs a certain structure and there's other functions in the business Hmm. they could do they could help so we we have what we call the real time reviewing of leadership team okay a really insightful exercise about yeah. team are all inputting to make sure that they are the right team right can you give us an example of what that might look like from a structural point of view yeah the, the, the three the three major roles of all business Gino discovered that they're they're identical really how you how you segment those users up and seats up is what we would discover so the three major functions are a sale or marketing and sales function, operations function, 
typically a finance function. Mm. You sell stuff, you've got to deliver stuff, make stuff, and you've got to collect money. Mm. And you come back to the basics of those three core functions at the leadership team, you're really able to understand how do we break it out. So you may break out sales and marketing to be two seats. Mm. You may break out finance to also be finance and HR. And then you may have a number of operational seats that are around customers, customer life cycle, customer delivery, those types of things. And once you have that structure of your unique structure for your company, you yep. basically put people in the seats. Okay. Big mistake that people generally make in business is they will put themselves in a seat mm. or everyone agrees on what that structure is. Got it. Okay. So call it structure first, people second. Yeah. Now we're putting the business first versus the people first. Got so it. Got it. Okay. So what about um like you were mentioned earlier about people that you know are in the room that don't want to be on the leadership team, for example. Um, yet, you know, they're in job, they're in jobs, they're in contract, whatever it might be. Does does your business, does your the, the plan, the framework that you implement, have strategies, have methodologies for helping a business to identify those people if they're not going to personally say to themselves, Do you know what, I don't want to be in this team, I don't even want to be here. I'm actually a coaster. I'm, I'm just kind of getting by. Does do, do, are you able to help address any of that sort of thing? We, we use the system of right person in the right seat. So a, a right person is somebody that demonstrates that they match the company, company's core values. So as part of one of our exercises, we would discover those core values. Who yeah. are you really as a business? And that would form part of your vision strategy. Um, so the right, the right person matches the values, the right seat, is a skills-based exercise. And that's that's what we call the GWC. So do you get it? Do you want it? Do you yeah. Have to do it? Yeah. So the right people that will give you that feedback are your fellow leaders. So where we conduct, once we design the structure of a business, we will ask your fellow leadership team members to GWC you. Right. And that's where it gets very interesting that yeah. People will be, if they're open and honest as a team, mm. obviously if they're not, then there's yeah. a different challenge. But if they are open and honest, you will see somebody that doesn't want it. Yeah, I got it. I'm bothered yeah. to get up early in the morning, they're late to business. There's yeah. a question. Now that doesn't mean to say they don't want to work in the business, they just may not want that seat. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. It's kind of real, it's a very open and honest way. Yeah. yeah. We're laying the foundations. Mm. Mm. Everybody isn't open and honest and we're just kidding each other. Yeah. As soon as you go into execution mode of your vision and plan, you're, yeah. it's going to crumble. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I mean, one of the biggest revelations I ever had in my career was I was very fortunate in one of my jobs to have exposure to EQI. Um, EQ, I think back then it was called EQ, EQI 360, EQI 125 or something like that. And, um, it, it was one of these revelationary processes whereby it was revealed to me via that system that I was, I had too high a opinion of myself. So I was, I was arrogant. I was too cocksure and so on. And obviously going through the experience of being undone, actually, um, of realizing that the reason why people around me weren't connecting with me that well was because I was basically an arrogant git and you know was so hell bent on hitting a number that i didn't care about anybody else at all you know um and so there's some really amazing systems out there obviously that can kind of work on individuals to help them to become better ultimately do you guys cross over into that world at all yeah we, we do and i'm going to use a thing behind me so we use a system called colby so right. Colby is a uh, cognitive process to understand your your DNA, yeah. your, your makeup of who you are as an individual. And it's, it's, it's the EOS preferred way of, of helping assess individuals. And, and you can see here, I'm a 7733. Seven, um, really means that my DNA is I'm a fact finder. I'm one of these people that will just need to know all the details. 
mm. my brain is like, once I know all the details, I'm then, I'm good. I'm good to go. And I can assess the risk based around, because I know the details. Yeah. I'm not a quick starter, whereby a lot of um, product entrepreneurs, they will be, let's go. They don't need to know all the detail. They don't need to know all the nitty gritty kind of thing. Mm. So Colby is a really great way of, once you put the team together, kind of going to the next level of right, what are we really made up as, as individuals? Mm. The whole, there's a bunch of series of workshops and um, areas that Colby helps a team really come together to, to start to work, to build that team, bearing in mind, you know, teams take, teams take effort and work to become a great team. You don't just start being a great team. No, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, from my perspective, I'd encourage anyone watching um, to re-embrace that whole world of you know, EQI, Colby, Myers-Briggs, whatever it might be, because um, I just found it so enriching. And, and, like, and genuinely, there's only been a, like, that many times in my life where I can safely say that I've, I've had a transformation, almost like an epiphany, I suppose, of a, of a big paradigm shift in, in my life and the, the fruit that then comes from that. And so I suppose... I'm sure you'd agree, Andrew, you know, anyone who's not got involved, especially youngsters watching, you know, who are thinking, oh, yeah, what do I want to be in life? Or I've got a spark for X, Y and Z. But, you know, um, want that kind of rounded view of themselves from the outside in when we were talking about leadership teams, you know, doing that 360 reflection piece. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd heavily recommend it. It's such a massive thing to have in your toolbox. Um, yeah, I think I think with the with everything that's going on around the diversity and the inclusion, yeah. teams need to be diverse. And, yeah. and it's also helping you understand the level of diversity and types. You can't all have the same team mm. with the same type of, you know, if you've got a team with all quick starters, yeah. I, you know, they're not, they don't understand risk, they just, it, it's going to fail. But also the same, the negative effect is if people don't understand what they are on a team that's where frustrations will kick in because if you're a fast starter and you can be on the team that keeps asking the question of no i need to know more i need to know more mm. and there's just those frust those egos will come in rather than oh actually yeah such and you know bob is this and uh, sue is that great now we know that yeah. you've just got to give each other yeah time and and headspace because we all deal with things differently mm. And yeah. that's where it goes, we'll just dominate it if there's no other process. Yeah, no, totally. And you're just reminding me of something, actually, about my other half. Because um, what you're really saying there is, is completely relationship management at, at all levels. And I remember my, um, at my local church, we did this thing called uh, Life Languages course. And uh, again, it was another one of those five you know, epiphany moments in my life where I realised that my wife, my, Michelle, was a very high responder, uh, which basically means a very empathic person. Um, and then I realized that I was, that was my lowest. And so I'm not excusing the fact that I'm not innately particularly empathic, but it did two things. First of all, it revealed to me that I was a low responder and therefore there were things I could do to improve my responder. Um, because that's not good actually being very un unempathic in life in general. Um, cause people don't really come along with you actually in many times, especially in a leadership role, if you have very low empathy, um, mm. But the other thing which was really, really important, and you mentioned it, was understanding Michelle. So when she acted a certain way, then I understood a bit more about what her filters were so that I know that as a high responder, one of her lenses she looks through is, do you value me? You see? And so when I knew that, and then I knew that I had low empathy, I could understand completely why, in some instances, she felt disconnected from me because I wasn't looking at her lens and thinking, I'm not showing her that I value her right now. I'm just perhaps, I know what it's in it, in one ear out the other. I mean, it was a big thing where I'd come home from work, I'd be, I'd be knackered and she'd be talking about her work, which was she works in a school. So she's in education in the public sector and I'm in, I would say pretty fast paced, high pressure sales tech environment and I'm knackered and I come home and she starts talking about somebody dropped a pen in the classroom. And of course my immediate unempathic reaction is, oh, you know, pfft, I'm not bothered with this. I just sit down and get my laptop open. But she turned around at me one day and she said, you never listen to me, man. I was like, what do you mean? We always listen to you. And it was just that kind of, again, revelation of understanding, actually, what is that person like? And am I, am I actually being 
proactive in terms of what they need or am I just really you know buried in my own existence so totally I totally understand what you're saying yeah absolutely it's it's the dynamics of team the team yeah. takes time to build and these are things these are tools and um disciplines we, we call them tools and disciplines that are here to help you uh, yeah. and if you're relying back on politics and egos the foundations will crumble yeah. uh, and you'll find your high churn and you'll find you won't be get the, you won't be able to get the right people in the right seats no completely so what about um going into the application in terms of the type of business so obviously well i didn't know this actually but we had an intro call i think a few weeks back where we, where we chatted and then i went back to my boss and said hey i just chatted to andrew had brilliant chat about this eos and traction he's like yeah 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 we use it i was like oh okay so segmentify actually uses this system already and i know it's very prevalent within the tech space and the SaaS space and so on um what about in the retail space are there any particular businesses that you'd say would be a really really good fit is it literally anyone with a team that wants to get to the next level what, what where do you see it fitting if you like yeah there's certainly uh, there's some trends that we see and these trends are related to so i'm classified as an eos implementer or professional implementer where i'm i'm working with eos worldwide um, and where, where the trends appear here is that implementers will tend to work with their their backstories or their their pre previous worlds hence my why mine is technology and um uh e-commerce and those types of things so there's definitely pockets of trends yeah if we break it down to the raw data eos fits any business it fits any business because the second mm. component of the six components is people mm. um, and the, the, the the statistics um 80 82 percent of all company issues relate to people so i'm often asked you know who who do you work with what type of companies you work with it's broad brush i just happen to focus on technology and retail and e-commerce because that's where my network can connect me but if you employ people then this is a system that really really helps you structure your business with the right people in the right seats because you're going to spend a predominantly most of your time fighting issues there cash there um and you know that that equation of cash and time and people is what what's killing the profitability of most businesses so yeah really really open and uh, you know i have some really fascinating types of clients in areas that you just think wow i would have never expected that yeah yeah no that's really great i mean listen andrew uh, i found that fascinating to understand a little bit more about what eos is and how it helps businesses um if anyone out there has been watching and is you know interested in terms of the strategic element the self-reflection element the team building leadership um what, what's the best way for them to get hold of you if they want to hear more about this um, i don't know whether you do any sort of free teaser type elements or anything like that to help them to understand whether there's something that could fit their business do you know what i mean yeah we we um, so the professional community for eos implementers will we we it's a great community you will always get the same compassion and the same uh, help first mentality is one of our core values is always explain what EOS is and how to use it as a proven method and process. We call this our, in our 90 minute meeting. So it may seem like a long, you know, 90 minutes is like, whoa, hold on a minute. But that would really help me explain what it is, learn about the company that was it is interested or the individual um, and basically exchange what the book is in what I call the movie format. Right. So it's a free session at no obligation awesome. of it. I will leave you with some tools and disciplines that you can go and use. So yeah. it's kind of a learning session as well. I will give you some things that you can put into the business. Mm. Um, best case, I can come and help you or another implementer could help you. Mm. Um, or there is a way of, as you mentioned, you can self implement. So yeah. you read the book and you can try and do it yourselves. Um, yeah. There's over currently over 10,000 companies that are using an implementer. Mm -hmm. 80,000 companies worldwide that try self implementation. Yeah. yeah. And the EOS worldwide website, you can do that via training and videos and help mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to use an implementer. So there's sure, a sure. different ways you can embrace it. Yeah. Learn about it, but ultimately, more than happy to give people that 90 minute meeting. Okay, cool. That's amazing. 
And I mean, um, so in terms of them actually physically getting a hold of you, is it via the website, email, LinkedIn? What do you prefer? Either either. Our website is commercialoptimization.co.uk. Um, email is andrew.stevens at commercialoptimization.co.uk. Um, you can also find my contact details on the website. Awesome. Okay. Well, as I say, I think I've, I've learned a lot about that and it, and it sort of touches and ticks a lot of boxes for me in terms of my life experience of the, the benefit of this kind of thing. So I hope the guys that have, um, you, you, you watching um, have enjoyed it and have got something out of it. And uh, so it just remains for me to say thanks so much for listening and watching. And um, as you know, all the vlogs and podcasts and stuff are on segmentify.com forward slash EGS now to make it a bit easier. Um, if you've got any questions or you want to be involved or you've got any topics you want us to research, just ping me at any time at phil at segmentify.com. But uh, just to finish off, thank you, Andrew, so much for your time again. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, we look forward to um, seeing you all again soon.